All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we will reconvene our session as of yesterday, 5.35, and we'll begin at 8.33 this morning. And I think we'll uh, understand that we have a couple of issues that we need to dispense with from yesterday's morning session. Is that correct? So, let's begin with that. Um, that's an employment issue. Was that a, was there one before that? An executive session, but we can take that at whatever point you'd like, Commissioner. Okay. Um, Item 17 on the agenda. Okay. Read that. The employment items. To consider and act upon the following employment items. A, Road and Bridge, the transfer of Eddie Esparza. B, Road and Bridge, the transfer of Mark Schumann. C, Road and Bridge, the salary increase for Juan C. Snettles. Okay. Roger, you want to speak or something with respect to that? I'll answer any question I don't really understand. Okay. Let um, me keep up your shoulders. Oh, uh, I have this. I mean, this is something that I've done for the past eight or nine years. And Commissioner, just to give you a little background, uh, we did take a vote yesterday. There was a motion on the floor and a second. We took a vote. It was a two to two vote. Part of the discussion that occurred yesterday is salary uh, dollars being moved within the budget, budgeted sal salary dollar amount. But these positions um, and I guess lack of control points, if you will, part of what we've been talking about from our uh, overall salary structure and what that might look like, if I remember correctly, and Roger, Keep me honest here, uh, there was an employee that indicated they did not want to do the job. They were originally hired I'm, to do... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time understanding what you're saying. Can you hear me better? Yes. Okay. That there was an employee that was hired to do a job, indicated he or she could not do that job. You transferred someone else to that job, but there was no decrease in pay. So... The position. Well, let's, let's have it. Maybe he can okay. It Absolutely. Okay. Uh, what happened was he's getting up in age and he approached me about uh, being removed from the sign shop because the physical demand on him was a little bit more than he could handle because he's like 63 or so. Okay. Uh, and he's had some health issues with his heart and stuff. So he uh, asked to be removed. We never gave him a raise to take that position because he was already at the sign shop's uh, pay scale there so then we asked uh, the newer guy which is Eddie Esparza to take his position and he was more than uh, happy to do so and he's the lowest man paid on the totem pole right now so we wanted to bring him up just a is little bit. Is that Mr. Esparza we're referring to? Esparza yes Esparza so we moved him into the sign shop because um, there's a lot of more responsibility and it's a lot physically demanding than the road crew and uh, Schumann, we can put him in a truck, you know, he's a little older. We don't like to work the older guys as hard as we do the, the younger guys because we don't want anybody passing away on our watch. So we kind of try to take it a little easier on him. It's hot out there. He's got to dig a lot of hose in the sign shop, and it's a single-man job. And the money is already budgeted there. It's not like we're asking for you to put more money in the last year's budget. It's already there. We're just trying to give it in the red. Yeah, I'm missing something there. Or? Yeah, and Commissioner Kelly can certainly give his opinion because I think we were both the nay vote yesterday. And from my perspective, this is what we continue to be challenged with at the court is that these salary dollar amounts get moved and the positions become out of line in and, in and with themselves. So when we see things during the budget cycle of I would like to bring this person up to position with this uh, other person, make them par in terms of salary, these are the things that are starting to shape that. And there has been a continuous pattern of that. This is not the first occurrence. Uh, we continue to kind of have this discussion at court, but Roger is correct in saying he has done this for quite some time. 
right or wrong. Um, well, does it, no other department does this at all? What I do? I believe that's what we're trying to avoid from uh, not ha continuing to happen. It looks like to me you're going to spend, uh, Eddie's going to go from 1400 uh, to 1600 Is that right? Is that what you're asking? It's it's about two thousand dollars a year, yes, somewhere in that area. What happens? And then to, after taxes, what happens to one salary does it go down or does it stay the same? Uh, Mark Schumann's was the same because it we would never stay the same. We go yeah, down. because he was already above above. Uh, okay, I'm, 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 but a we're slow there. Let me uh, let's see if we can kind of try, try to catch up. Well, we we start. Sparzo was a gentleman that you wanted to move because of health issues and uh, age. No, uh, Mark Schumann. And Esparza, Esparza took his position. And then Juan Cisneros, he's a, a crew leader. We made a crew leader, which we'll, we'll make effective or official at budget time. We'll make them crew leaders because we have two crews, one for uh, blading, stuff like that, and one for patching. And we made him a crew leader. We have to have somebody in charge. Yeah, we have to have somebody in charge when one of us aren't out there all the time. Well, that way they can bring is. it to us. It's a chain of command what we're trying to establish. Well, my question is, you're raising one salary. Why wouldn't you lower the other salary since he's not going to be doing that position anymore? Well, he's already at his uh, maintenance tech position one well, salary. That's what we're getting. That's yeah, you can't get no lower than that. That's the issue. Yeah, he's a maintenance tech one is what he really is. He never got moved up. We gave him a chance to, you know, to work in there. And I understand the court may not like the way I do this, but there's no rules of regulation that says I can't. If you want to go in and make something, that's fine. But. Okay, uh, talk to me about, from the court's perspective, about if uh, the funds are in the budget. We, we, for a long time, and I know I've been an advocate of that, of not trying to um, micromanage departments. And have the, that's why we have department managers in that position. They know their personnel, they know their employees, and they know the the, the dynamics of that, of how to shuffle and move around even prior to budget. If, if, if the money's in their budgets to do that, then, and if the department manager, whether it be for maintenance or uh, uh, road and bridge or HR or whatever, it's their thoughts that, their belief that that would be in the best interest for the department employees. and. And if the funds are available in that budget, and it will not be effectively that we've had to do anything as far as adding doing this this time or any part of uh, doing our budgetary process, then what are the concerns? What are the issues, I guess? I agree with you, uh, Commissioner. Uh, there's two people here that are changing, increasing their responsibilities. So there is two, two of these positions will we're requested to give them a little raise because of the increase in responsibility. And since we don't have any of those rules or regulations in effect at this point, that's why I supported uh, this particular action. Okay. Okay. I'd like to hear from the, uh, the, the arguments, I guess, because uh, you know we, we've been working hard. We, we know we have some issues. That's why we're working hard to, to develop this committee for strategies throughout the, uh, the county as far as the salary structure and, and move forward in that area. We're not there yet. We know we got some issues trying to do that. But, but help me understand, uh, all things being equal, why are we, I guess, interjecting our thoughts and opinions other than doing budgetary time uh, that the department manager uh, foresees that he has these concerns and by the shuffling, given the fact that the funds are there, why are we uh, you know, in trying to intercede in this area? So I can at least speak to a couple of scenarios that we had, but in this particular situation, I think one would be led to believe if there's one position that is increased, then the opposite position should decrease based on the scenario that we've been presented well, and wait, 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 wait. job duties, et cetera. Okay, I, I, I got some concern with that. I, I, I don't believe that we need to <laughs> decrease uh, an individual salary unless that individual is not uh, holding up their end in a dynamic way. And so I'm, I, I have some concerns with lowering the, the salary of individuals, especially from the course perspective. And it's, it was a health issue also.
And again, not negating the not negating the people. I'm I'm absolutely not talking about the people themselves because as we will continue to vet out over today, they are entitled to much more money than we can actually give them. So it is never a discussion about the people. And please do not mistake that comment and my concern around the lack of salary structure. What makes it challenging for the court is that every department does it different. Some departments don't handle it that way. And they're really at a disadvantage because their employees are not getting these kind of shuffles in pay, if you will. What happens to the court, which we have seen even this budget cycle, it is not unique this year, is that we get departments that present it to the court that indicate they would like this employee to be paid comparable to this employee in that department, in a, in a separate department, because they have like-type jobs. And I understand that concern. So we ask the question of how do we get there? This is one element of how do we get there? And I would agree with you, Roger, there is no set parameters around what that should look like. We have no control points for a county this size that is highly unlikely and highly unusual with the dollar amounts that we're talking about from salary. So from my perspective, I certainly can't speak for the full court. My perspective, it just speaks to the process that is necessary. This Salaries are our biggest line item in the entire budget. I, and to I, have I, no I, controls over that is negligent, in my opinion. I yeah. agree. Uh, and, and what I would echo is that uh, full, full speed ahead as far as our strategy, as far as the salary structure for this committee, we need to try to move forward and implement it as soon as possible. I don't think we need to deliberate that in this this setting, and especially uh, a micromanaging a, a department manager uh, decisions on. And we on we do employees. try to keep our maintenance techs all in one area, as far as pay, and maintenance techs to operators, operator one and two. We all keep them in that same area so that nobody's getting paid for their different job title, I guess, you know, we try to keep them all the same. All the operators are the same, all the operator twos, which is not very many because you have to be up there, but we all keep them close together. That's why we're trying to bring up the lower paid guy for his responsibility to bring him up a little bit more to match everybody else. It's a maintenance tech. But the gentleman, the, uh, it's, make sure I got the command correct, Mr. Schumann it was the gentleman that was having the issues. Today. Yes, he was having the health. He is not getting a, a pay, uh, increase. In pay no, no, no. He's not getting an increase. He's still a maintenance tech. Yeah, he's still a maintenance tech one. That's what he was in. It, his pay scale was maintenance tech one when he went into that sign shop. And we never gave him one because we were going to give him a chance to prove himself also. So he's not sitting on a bench now, a lateral. No, no, no. He's driving a truck. He's driving a truck or a roller or something like that. Something less not digging holes. Okay. He's not digging holes no more. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> no, I think we're ready to okay. take it for a vote. Okay. Then, uh, I um, appreciate whatever you say. Okay. Um, let me reemphasize before we take the vote that it is is apparent to me, I think to the court too and others as well, we need to, to move forward on our strategies as far as the sound of the committee as soon as possible. Having said all that, uh, I'll entertain a motion to affirm the record. How do we do this legally? Because we've already voted. Once. Yeah, we voted, and it. Where, is Dave here yet? Hi. Good morning. <laughs> so we can revote. Is that correct? Motion. Yeah, I think we would fails. revote. We would revote. Yeah, we can always bring it back. You I don't think that's a, that's a question. I, but we'll uh, uh, confirm this with Dave. Dave, we are entertaining the the issue as far as the road and bridge employment issues. And I know that that was a vote taken yesterday. It was a tie. Uh, I've asked for it to be brought back to the court, because I was absent yesterday, and we re-vote re on this issue. Yes. New motion, okay. everything? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I think you did. Mm -hmm. I think you did. Because the old motion died because it was a tie. Basically, to start off and have a new vote. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a motion to uh, uh, the request of uh, the Rowan Bridge confirming those requests for the three individuals, Mr. Cisneros, from the equipment operator, Stephen Crease, Mr. Esposa, maintenance technician, uh, just a lateral transfer to side shot tech, and from Mr. Schumann, from the, is a lateral also from a side shot tech to a maintenance tech. Second. 
Okay. It's been a uh, motion to accept these requests and second it. All in favor, show of hands. Opposed? Okay, it passes 3 2. Okay. Is there another issue that an executive to... session on the Sixth Street property? But we can okay. take that at another time. Yeah, let's, or... let's wait and take that. Okay. That seems to me out of the audience. Wait. What do we need, Paul? Um, District Attorney. We have a few. We have a few answers to some of the items that were pending yesterday, like age of computers and such. If you want to address those or we can move forward with the district attorney's office. I believe he was next in line. Let's get the, you want to get the collateral stuff out of the way first, uh, the computers or is that? I'd say let's keep presenting and then the at the end we can have all that at the end. Because we'll have to review that. We'll have to review the equipment at the end, I'm sure. Everybody else agree with that? Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So move on with the CA. Okay, first I would like to mention that you'll see that the amount in the current budget column on the DA salary supplement is different from the department request and the proposed. That is an error that I made last year and did not apply the raise last year to the budget. His actual pay did go up as it was supposed to, but I did miss it in in the actual printed budget. So he's not requesting a raise. That's just a correction oh, okay. from last year. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Bright Eyes. Ah, oh, you're so funny. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I got my hazard cone colors on because I'm a walking disaster zone right now. Uh, the budget is pretty much the same as last year's, which is pretty much the same from the year before for the office. Um, it, with the exception of one thing about the capital equipment. On the capital equipment, uh, we had listed a couple other items and we were able to go ahead and get those out of this year's budget because we could get them here in time. We've got some furniture and stuff that we don't have. The uh, 400000 that I put in there, I wasn't aware that Kerry was going to put some money in in the capital outlay in regards to the case management system. So as far as I'm concerned, you can take that $400,000 off of there as long as you leave the eight hundred in there that she put in on the other side. Uh, because I do think we're going to be in a position to be buying uh, some stuff for the prosecutors and possibly for the court system for the clerks and which uh, probably this next budget cycle. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. I raised the travel a little bit because uh, everything's getting more expensive for the travel for the lawyers, for their CLE and that sort of stuff. Uh, the good part about that is we used to get reimbursed more than we do now, but we get a lot of the training. We go to our Texas District and County Attorneys Association, which reimburses us some of the expenses for going to those seminars. So uh, it's kind of like the sexual assault exam fund or, where the Attorney General reimburses the county for those funds. We're getting some of the funds back from TDCAA on our travel and uh, education budget. Other than that, it's pretty much the same thing. Randall, I have two questions. Uh, the first on the capital, or this may be non-capital item, the Adobe Acrobat, the standard, 20, it looks like quantity 24, I'm assuming 24 license. Sure. Can you help me understand that need? I'm not sure if that's a new need or if that was taken out. Oh. Right. That's what we bought. That's what we took care of in this budget cycle. We got those out of there. That's why she's pulled out that money, because we bought them out of this budget cycle. We found out we could get them here before the budget cycle. Okay, would you ended. still mind explaining the, the need for, a, is it a full license on an Adobe Acrobat? Is that is that what you're requesting with yes. the dollar amount? Yes. Would you help me understand the use for that in the office? Pardon me? Would you help me understand the use for that in the office, the full Acrobat, the dollar amount that's tied to that? That's everything, not a typical license. Everything's so. coming to us in PDF now. 
it's getting sent to us from outside agencies in PDF, and all we've got to do is the ability to read it. Uh, and it will make it much simpler. The Adobe Acrobat came with the scanners, um, and for the secretaries, that's where all the scanners went, except for one that went to our lawyer that does the Public Information Act requests, and that's where the redaction software is going to also, uh, because we get a lot of Public Information Act requests, as I'm sure Scott's office does, and to go through, if we have to give up something, a lot of times we're able to be exempt from doing it, but if we have to give up something, to go through and line by line to delete stuff is going to be rather tedious, and we need a redaction program not only for that, for that, but sometimes for, in other cases uh, for possible discovery where we may need to redact some things. Okay. So that's what that's for. But the Adobe tied to the scanners has made the court secretaries, actually all the secretaries' job, but particularly in handling the movement of the electronic case files around and dealing with the things we're having to deal with with the Michael Morton Act and those sort of things has made it much better. But what I can tell you is that to my office, us doing something about a case management system is critical. And the reason for it is the system we've got in place is a hodgepodge of different pieces. And while we're doing it electronically, and that's helping us greatly dealing with the Michael Morton Act, it is very labor intensive to get all that stuff done because there's no automatic triggers that push things through. Like if one secretary finished with something, say we got the indictments done, they put the file together, complaint done, we get the file together. The next secretary knew to take care of it because it was laying in their stack. Now you have to do that electronically and you have to send an email to let them know hey, in our case management system that we've got, you need to go there and do it. So it's become a little more labor intensive actually than being uh, the paper file system. And we don't have any tracking or anything like that with it. So if somebody gets in and gets in the, what I'll call the electronic filing cabinet of cases and accidentally deletes something, if they don't fess up to it, we're never gonna know it. Um, and so uh, uh, that's my plug for telling you the case management system for the prosecution office is gonna be really important. We, have, we got that stopgap put together to last really until what we had hoped would be the end of the year where we could be up and live with something with the RFP that we had. Um, of course, that fell apart. So, but we're gonna be looking to buy something this year. Okay, so if I heard you correctly, we can cut that prosecutor CMS line item. Is that correct? Yes, okay. you can take that off because Carrie's put money in elsewhere. And uh, back on the actual review of the line items, the detail, did I see cell phone allowance take a significant jump? Is that correct? Pardon me? No, that's where we had to reclassify from salaries to general expense. So. Uh, you'll see up here in the salary line item, they had $4,800, and we moved it down to the cell phone expense, so it's the 48 plus the 1750 for the phone. The actual phones that I believe y'all rotate for whoever's on call, right. we actually pay for a cell phone that's rotated. Okay. We have folks on call 24-7, besides me carrying mine around, and the first assistant having his also. Thank you. You look like you want to ask me something. I do. <laughs> um, no more jokes about my eyes, okay? No, I won't. I'll, just, I'll leave that alone. No, I was wondering on the um, <clears throat> CMS case management system, it was, it's kind of news to me because the last really I, I'm aware of is that we've given up on that contract with AMCAD. Correct. And so my concern, of course, is that we don't have a hodgepodge. And so is, are we working toward getting something that everybody can, is tied into? The answer would be yes, we are. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're working on it. And we had, 
we had some people in the other day. I don't want to get off into that. Right. That'd be thirty minute side story. But we we are working to try to make sure everybody gets a fluid system through with the uh, from the criminal justice system, and everybody's satisfied with what they've got. Yeah, I just didn't want to see us get into you buy something, somebody else gets something else. Okay. And uh, Commissioner Kelly, I meant to, I meant to start off with this. We're rooting for the same team this year, next year. That's true. <laughs> I guess we see next eye to eye on that. Next year's team. <laughs> All right. Everybody good with that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Here we can emailed the constables, but I did not hear back from anyone. So anybody here from the constables? Right I have not, no. Okay. Fire and rescue, because not. Okay. Let's see, where are we? Uh, would y'all like to look at public service? Uh, yes, ma'am. Remember seeing a page for that. Is this the uh, the emergency management fund? It is yes. emergency management, and this is where we have our tiers payment uh, okay. and any other nonprofits that request funding. This is where we account for those. And the ones that I have listed here are the ones that we have received requests from. So that's interesting that the tears pledge has gone down a little. It's because um, our rate increased less than everyone else's last year, and because it's based, I believe, on that tax levy. Hmm. Is that going to be a uh, system? It will just depend on how the entities raise their taxes, what it will do each year. I guess I, I said this last year, and I'll say it again. I don't understand how we have picked two particular <coughs> agencies to give money to, and that would be the uh, community service, Penn Health Community Services and the High Plains Food Bank. Um, why them, why not a bunch of others? Um, how do we feel about telling taxpayers that we're giving their money to something they could, where they need to choose themselves where they want their money to go to? I don't know, I just, I have some reservations about that. I guess I have a couple of things, I'm knowing that the uh, full bank and the uh, family community services are agencies that really have a, uh, Commitment to the, to the whole populace, basically, of the area. And uh, other, unless there's another agency that you think that might be out there that might be more constructive toward the, the populace. No, and I don't doubt that. I just wonder why we make that choice for taxpayers' dollars. We meaning the court? The court. I mean, is there, I guess, uh, historically, has that been the case that we would pick out particular agencies that really focus to what the uh, more broader scope for, for the community citizen? I'm really not sure how the court has done it. I, like I say, these are the ones that actually submitted requests to the court for funding. Yeah, and there has been a historical precedence. I mean, yeah. th these are not line items that we are just seeing this year. And, no. and I understand your question, Commissioner Church, but um, I, I would agree with you, Commissioner Vaughn. These particular agencies are um, all encompassing of services within the county. And I personally would find it hard to believe that a taxpayer would question that, but that's my own opinion. Yeah, the, the food bank services, a uh, broad scope of individuals throughout the area have been so far. Number of, 
of years, and certainly the command, Pan Island Community Services, certainly an uh, entity agency that, that help other individuals with utilities and uh, things. Do we automatically give that to them, or do they have to ask for it? They have to ask. They ask for it. Have they asked for it? They have to ask they for have. it. They have. Yes, that's why you'll see there are a couple of years that there are no actuals, and they may have sent the request for budget, but if they don't actually ask for the payment, we don't send it automatically. Do we have a specific amount budgeted each year that we are going to uh, allow, allow for? Uh, no. that, that's a year-to-year -year decision that you guys make. So do they specifically put in a request that, uh, as, as an example, uh, 10000 for No, the amounts that are in there are what they've requested. I guess uh, the commission does a good point about uh, when they submit those requests, is it basically rubber stamp and we uh, put the commission down and that's what we're going to give? No, if I recall correctly, there were a couple of other entities that sent requests last year that were denied, so it, it's just a discretionary decision on the court's so how, part. So how do we do that? How do we approve and how do we deny? What, is, what does it come? What does it come into those requests? To the auditors. They're usually sent to the county judge. Uh, just a letter, usually explaining what their services are and a dollar amount that they're requesting. Okay. I would call them, but I don't. Uh, I know we used. Uh, I say we, that's in kind of in a broad terms, but the, the Corps used to give the Soil Conservation District some money for education for youth, and uh, we quit that a few years ago, and I don't know. I don't know how this all works, but I know that we've given the last two years I've been on the court to these two entities, but it's always been my my not really a concern, but just a wonder. If you like, we could probably submit that out as far as uh, fact-finding and how that's done. Uh, I guess that's, that's an interesting point. I, I would like to know now if you brought it up, but at least how it's done. Then it, it'll submit it through the county judge. And, and presented to you guys. Huh? And it's up to the court. Yeah. Okay. The discretion of the court. Carrie, I do have a question on the row that you've highlighted, 1375, the PANCOM fair share commitment. We budgeted for that last year. Is that commitment fulfilled? No, it is not, and I was noticing that too. I do not have anything written from them, but I did call John Keel, and he did request that we budget the same amount we did last year, and I failed to get it in there, so I do okay. need to add that for the PANCOM fair share. So 10, 10, 756, same as last year? Yes. Yes. When they do submit their budget, if it changes, I will bring it back to the court. So we ready to proceed? Okay. Fire Rescue is the next department. Morning, Chief. I guess we can go to equipment first. I'm The command vehicles need to be changed to one. The computer can be removed. And correct me if I'm wrong, the lot firefighting equipment is non-capital equipment, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. 
Kerry, do you have the, his current fleet um, available? I'm looking for the document here. So I think it's in, interesting to just review. I know that obviously the court, or at least I feel like the court has made significant strides over the last couple of years to bring that fleet up to yes. semi-par, if we would yes. call it that. So I'm just interested in terms of the one that you have budgeted, particularly the engine. Yes. I see it's a 92, but I'm, I'm thinking through your structure here. If you remember uh, budgetary time last year, we were talking about a truck that kept having intermittent problems that we had talked about. Should we replace one or two? And I said, give us another year. Well, time's up. It, it has quit, and we've got it stripped down and parked right now. So. So in what condition is the one that's scheduled to be replaced 2015, the 1989? Uh, everything on that, once again, is kind of up for debate. We, we tried to plan a 20-year replacement that uh, we're still way behind there. So this year we're going to replace the one that's broken down rather than the one that was on the schedule. So. Gary, is there any way to sort by column L just so we can see the oldest replacement date at the top? Sure. I'm just thinking through your fleet, Chief. And yeah, it's very complicating, and it's hard for me to put a handle on sometimes, too, because we're, we've got trucks that are older that are still in really good shape, and we've got some trucks that have less miles and are newer that are theoretically a much worse condition that cost us more money to keep so yeah and that would be the discretion at least from my perspective i can't speak for the court but that's the discretion that i'm, I'm hoping to maybe gather during this budget session because what what i see preparing for court is i see the anticipated replacement date so if something was scheduled to be replaced in 2013 it would lead me to believe that these would be kind of falling at the top of the tree or a higher priority well, if you well and when i drew them up last year that was the intention, and when I took them to budget this year, I had uh, I had modified that list. And another complicating factor in this is every year when a new truck comes in, we move many trucks. So what's pumper one or pumper two this year may be a totally different truck next year. So it you know once again all the numbers move, everything moves, and it, it makes it hard to do. And the reason I do that is I cycle equipment down. We have a station that might run, you know, 20, 30 calls with that truck a year. I'm going to give them one of the older trucks, put one of the newer trucks up that runs 100, 150 calls a year. So I try to keep them, uh, I try to keep them where we're going to get the best use out of them without wearing one out while having a brand new truck sitting there for you know, a couple of years. So how does the court start to understand that strategy? And, and the reason I say that is because obviously I'm looking at the spreadsheet and the one that's requested to me uh, appears that we weren't expecting that to be replaced until 2017. I just want to make sure that we're following the same path of really trying to make good by your fleet and keep that up to par just so it's not a rolling target every year. I can't remember what engine aid is and I couldn't get my sheet to print. I don't have my expected replacement date for engine aid. I don't. Are those looking at as far as optimistic dates that uh, initially we put out there? Mostly. Yeah, we tried to, when we brought this in and started like four years ago to try to get a replacement cycle down, mm -hmm. basically what I'm looking at is five years for command vehicle which if you look at our command vehicle fleet, the one that I'm trying to replace is gonna be eight years. Um, 10 years for our rehab van. Uh, we're trying to go 10 to 15 years with our rescue trucks because they're smaller and get more wear and tear. And we're trying to go 20 years with the larger trucks. And when I sat down and put that together, if I just went on a 20 year timetable, there's several trucks that are slated for replacement. And like I said, when we go back and look at that, we go, well, that truck will last us a couple more years, so I try to fudge the, the dates on them, you know, to try to figure out where we're at. And right now, it's very, this, this uh, replacement schedule is still in its infancy. Um, 
I still have trucks that are dated in the 1980s. I still have high mileage trucks. So it's trying to juggle what we need without coming in here and going, I need 10 trucks to set this list straight. So I'm still trying to do it, you know, one truck. And I still firmly believe that if we replace one truck a year, one of the large trucks a year, we can still make trucks move in different places to get that cycle closer to to where eventually we'll have a 20 year replacement cycle. So the one being requested, I'm sorry, Commissioner, is it P or E6 or No, E8? it's uh, engine eight. It okay. shows on that list as engine eight. It's a okay. 1992 E1 hush. And once again, 2017 was a, you know, sounded like a good idea at the time because we had rebuilt the transmission in the truck, everything was working on it. And now, we have a quote for you know twenty-two thousand dollars just to look in and see what the electronics problem is on the truck, and basically we're going to rebuild a rebuilt transmission. We've got nineteen eighties technology in a nineteen ninety truck. I don't see that that truck warrants spending more than its value to repair it. So engine eight gets bumped to the top of the list. That was all I was going to say is that you've determined that this is the truck that needs to be yeah, it's, replaced. Because and it, of is, its it is very complicating to go through. And, you know, once again, we do, you know, and most of this is on me. I, I have some of the guys help me with it, but most of this is on me because it's kind of a, a guessing game as to what truck. Um, two years ago when we started the uh, emergency reporting system, I can now at least track expenditures. I can track maintenance, I can see where our trucks are eating up our money, and that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to, to move things around on this list to where it's more realistic to look at it and go, yeah, this truck is coming up. Because right now it's like, I'd like to do this one, but something else might break or, you know, tear up. And the command vehicle that you're, you, you Steph, still left in the budget, which one is that? Which unit are you attempting it's to? It's gonna be unit four. Okay. It's a 2006 uh, expedition. It's a unit four, unit two. Is that uh, it? Fitzpatrick, two years. That, that's an old list. Um, Unit four has been changed to a 2006 expedition. That pickup is gone. This one. Okay. It's unit two? Yeah, it's showing right there. That's 2006 expedition. The pickup's gone now, the 2000 yes. pickup. The various firefighting equipment that you have listed at 25,000, can you help explain that? and? Kind of my point of reference is I, I feel like we've made again significant strides in the equipment and um, the turn yeah, material it, and we have made significant strides but once again twenty five thousand dollars is a very small percentage of what i have yeah, tied up in yeah. hazmat and rescue gear when i buy one set of extrication gear if i went out and bought one set that is a power unit that's the hoses the cutter the spreader the ram everything needed for vehicle extrication, that one set is $25,000. So what I have done is over the past eight years or so, I have bought a power unit where we need a power unit, a spreader where we need a spreader, and we're piecemealing equipment together. And there's nothing wrong with that because all of our equipment, all but one of our equipment now is compatible. So rather than spend $25,000 this year to buy one set, I can split the hazmat equipment, the rescue equipment, and the extrication equipment up, and I can spend bits and pieces of that budget every year to keep rebuilding that. Because if I come in and said, I need, you know, I need to replace all the extrication equipment, we're probably looking at somewhere in the area of half a million dollars. That's the amount of inventory that the fire department carries. That's what we need. And to replace it all new, you know, that's what we're looking at. So if I can come in for 10 to 12,000 a year and buy some extrication equipment to replace what's 
needing to be replaced. Like right now, sitting on the floor, I have a 1981 set of Hearst equipment. And that... 81 of which? What kind of equipment? It's Hearst. Hearst. And uh, the, the equipment was obsolete in the 90s. But we still have been using it. So now I can buy, and I think y'all have probably just seen the order come through. We're buying a new power unit. We uh, replaced the cutter. So I take those pieces and I put new tips on the cutter. And now we have what's called a combi tool and we buy a power unit for that, we put it on a truck, we have a whole new set of jaws without having to spend fifteen to $20,000 just for that set of equipment. So the, the 25000 is kind of a small piece of that pie. We have a level B hazmat team that equipment expires yearly. Sampling equipment, uh, lab equipment, some of the PPE, it all has expiration dates on it. So we have that set up on a rotation that when that gear expires, we can just buy stuff and it comes out of the non-capital equipment. Does that help explain does. what you. we do with yes, that? Yes, it does. Carrie, if we can just look quickly at the department, but the detail, yeah, perfect. Thank you. CSED, this is our next department. And we do get uh, about 50% reimbursed from Randall County on the capital equipment and non-capital equipment purchased. What was that, Carrie, a 50%? Right at 50% is reimbursed from Randall County on their capital and non-capital equipment. And can we look at the capital and non-capital real quick, please? Do we know what that, with 10, quantity of 10 office furniture, do we know what that is? No, this is something that he budgets pretty much every year uh, with, I think he has 78 or 80 officers and he never knows if he's going to need chairs or desks or filing cabinets, so he just plugs in an amount to cover whatever needs arise. Hmm. Do we traditionally allow other departments to budget office equipment with that line item? Kind of a, if we need it? Um, not so much, but, but they are kind of a, a different entity since they are state and we are required to provide their furnishings for them. And 50% reimbursement. Okay. And the video security system, is that a new request this year or are they replacing one? I'm not sure. So I would be interested to see if it could piggyback off of the video security system that we talked about yesterday with the tax assessor's office since we are attempting to go to this central model with a server. Do they, yeah, we typically look at the same vendor as that uh, a separate uh, procurement uh, process and what that comes with you, you David? Is CSCD's IT? Yes, they do.
Yeah. That's a good point, Thank you, Commissioner. Well, just because I think we, you know, we've seen a lot of this, especially yesterday, with these separate, mm -hmm. separate kind of pods, if you will. Of if I do it this way, if I do it this way, if we start to consolidate, we can really take advantage of yeah. kind of the pricing that we've been talking about. Um, I'm trying to look quickly, Carrie, of how much we budgeted for tax assessor's office for. I don't. For some reason, I don't remember it being fifty five hundred, but I could have that. I believe it was seven seven thousand. So I don't. I don't know if there would be any cost savings if we're kind of tacking on, like we just need to purchase the camera versus the actual but foundational work. But uh, you know, the the amount of camera, how many? We have ten. Five thousand five hundred for one. Oh, video system. It's a system. We don't know how, how many is in that system. We we don't know that. Okay, but you are that would be my only comment is if they can utilize the existing platform that we're right. moving to, I think it will do us well to maintain it as well. <laughs> okay. The next department is juvenile probation and their budget will also be approved at noon today, uh, but they did not request an increase this year. I don't have any questions. Looks like it's uh, education and travel. They've never had it before. Yeah. They've had it. Now they've got, you know, not any they've got a new, probably a, a new uh, core of uh, employees that are coming into that. Potentially, yes. And this is a department that we have budgeted travel in the past, but they have not uh, needed to use it. And that budget that we've in the past, it's, it's typically been the 2000. Yes. Okay. okay. County extension. I just have one question on this budget and a question for Mike. Um, thinking through the project of the carpet at the extension office uh, and the reimbursement that we're expecting on the insurance, I'm remembering that we did not expect the insurance to cover that at 100% and there might be a little difference. Do we know that dollar amount and should we budget for that? So this would be replacing the carpet that was part of the hell storm in May. Um, oh, it's a full replacement, if I remember yes, correctly, so Mike. Replacing VCT tile and the carpet out there. Uh, we're putting more VCT tile back than what was originally there. Okay. And so we have insurance reimbursement to do that, uh, but we do expect a small little difference. Uh, we didn't know the dollar amount at that time, so. If, you can get that. Okay, that was the only. Okay. Ready to move Good. Up? Yes, sir. Okay. The burial expense. That um, is that just an increase in. Yes, that was utilization <laughs> was requested because we are seeing an increase in the there number. is a, okay. I assumed it was based on trends, but I just thought it'd be confirmed. It's actually the cremation that we don't bury yes. it. Right. Correct.
Carrie, what, um, who oversees this department, the Family Crime Union? County Attorney. The County, okay. And we do have a CPS grant that reimburses a portion, um, I believe annually about $45,000 of salaries and such. And the next, two, the next two grants are overseen by the DA. By the what, I'm sorry? By the district attorney. Okay. And we do have grant funds on this first one as well. 60,000? I'm sorry, Carrie, the one just right above it. Yeah. Right here, just give just a Okay. Thank you. Ready? Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Are we going to start with equipment or line items? Let's start with capital. <laughs> Good choice. Okay, first of all, we're asking for that tractor. This will be our uh, third year asking for it. It's the one that we had issues with and it broke down. And we have uh, about 600 odd miles of bar ditch to mow. So that puts us at a, at a, setback because um, we have to a short window of time to mow everything in the county which is from May till September and we have a part-time crew doing that so we need all the tractors running uh, that we can get going and then second of all is uh, our patch and roller the patch and roller is something we used uh, I'd say almost every day. If they're making asphalt or if the weather's uh, not raining or snowing, we use the patch and roller. That's just one of our uh, necessities also. And then uh, the co-planter is one of the same things. We use that to cut the, the potholes out and you have to cut them out to get to the sub base. That way that the asphalt will stay there a lot longer. We use that on a on daily basis also, along with the, pro pa uh, the patch and roller. And then the tar pot. The tar pot is uh, more of a preventive maintenance equipment. We use that to, uh, in the wintertime when the, the asphalt contracts, we'll patch those uh, cracks in the road. That way uh, it'll keep the moisture from getting under the asphalt and uh, it'll help the road last a lot longer. And that's all we're asking for, not much. So Abby, one thing that would be helpful, um, I think, maybe in the future, I was looking at the inventory schedule, similar to what we use for fire and rescue and mm -hmm. the anticipated replacement date. And at least the one that I have, that one is blank um, or empty, yeah. those columns are empty. So in terms of planning and certainly not for this budget mm -hmm. session but just something to think about in the future um, it's it's helpful to really kind of get our mind around what we're expecting from year to year mm -hmm. so if there's ever any time to maybe review that i think it would be helpful for the court um, to just have that as a reference when we're obviously looking at all of the capital requests throughout the county okay yeah, yeah we can do that because I, I personally, I pull that every year looking through budget and yeah. looking at that and what does it really a mean for the department and the ramifications of that if you don't get that equipment. So just, okay. just a side note. Okay. Commissioner, any comments on the equipment? I'd be interested to hear your back feedback. To the line items. Okay. Are we... Uh, Leasing a patching roller now, or do you have your own? No, we have one. It's just getting to where it's, uh, I believe, what, 14 years old? 
I think it's seen its better days, and uh, it's harder to find up parts for it. We've had a few breakdowns with it. Your opinion on the equipment, Commissioner? Well, you have to, uh, right? My opinion is that I trust our uh, department to request the things that they need, so uh, it's then up to us to decide whether or not we have the money to spend it. I would echo that we trust all of our departments to ask what they need. Right I have a, I'm sorry, go ahead. Right please. now they're putting tape and hand aids to, I guess, to keep it rolling, so The, I see an increase on the uniform line item. Can you help explain that? Uh, well, the thing is with these guys, they work in the asphalt. They work uh, doing all the dirty jobs, and, and that they have been uh, getting their uniforms damaged and, and holes in them, so we try to replace them. Uh, we usually don't give them uh, new uniforms except for whenever they renew the contract. So we try to keep those uniforms at least two years, and sometimes they get holes in them. And, and stuff like that, and that's the only time we will replace them. And we would need um, a 1,200 increase. We're not changing our policy um, on how we re replace those. No, we're not changing our policy. But I don't. Um, where's that? What line? Is that? I think our contract's up uh, this next year. Is probably why we're asking for a little bit more. I'm not quite sure. Uh, Who do we contract with for the uniform services? Okay. Year to date, we've spent thirty-five hundred and sixty dollars. We've spent thirty-five hundred year to date. Okay. And the miscellaneous hand tools, I also see a little bit of a bump. Is there something that you're expecting to grow in that line item? No. Um, I'll let Sutton Don ask about the uh, hand tools. As far as hand tools are concerned, most of your hand tools are owned by the mechanics themselves, but occasionally we have to buy special tools to work on uh, the different equipment we have at our shop. And this year we had to repair several pieces of equipment. And one of them was just, just the impact wrench, which came up to almost $300. We had around $3,500. We were getting to the end of the budget and running out of money. Okay. Thank you. Um, the contract services, road, road services, road twenty-seven thousand. Is that is that a new line item, Carrie? Or. Well, we're asking for uh, that because it's our striping service. You know, uh, the do not pass, the white lines on the edge of the road, all that stuff. Because when we seal coat, we'll put the tabs down and then we'll come back and stripe them. And uh, we do the, uh, different roads every year, but mainly like Lakeside and Dow Road where they have the, the overlaid roads that really need it. Or if they're fading, we'll put it in there. We don't have a whole lot of roads that are striped. But the ones we do, we try to do uh, around that amount every year, striping. And, and we, we have to contract it out of Lubbock because they're the only people to do it. Barricades Unlimited out of Lubbock. So how often that's done? Excuse me? How often is that done? Uh, once a year, right before school starts usually. Like we'll get it in. We already got our order in now, and it should be done by uh, the end of this month or next month. But how have we done it in past years? Because we've this is a is this a brand new budget we've, item? Where I don't see. We've taken it out of roadway. Um, 
roadway, well, I call it roadway material, but uh, we've taken it out of road, road repair supply is where we usually take it out of. So has that gone down uh, to the far right? Well, last year it did. It doubled <laughs> from 2012, 490, 2013, 654, this year, 784. It's a significant jump over the last couple yeah, years. Yeah, well, the co yeah, the cost of asphalt, um, everything co cost of caliche, all of our road material comes out of there and it, everything's gone up. Amount of more frequent, frequent repairs. Yes, a lot of more repairs. And we've had a lot of wet, wet moisture this right, year. You know, right. And we're expecting the snow to come in too, yeah. so it's gonna tear the roads up. So how much have we spent on that line item, the ro road repair supplies to date this year? We've spent 280,000, but we have another 247,000 in open POs. So roughly 500. Yeah. So you don't feel that with 784,000 in that line item, that's enough to cover the contract services for road services that you just spoke to? Striping. The striping. It's possible. We could. You could. Yes. What, where, where are we now up to this point? As far as uh, but where are they at uh, dollars? They've actually spent two hundred and eighty thousand, and they have another two hundred and forty-seven thousand in open purchase orders for materials. They haven't. We're a little yet over five hundred thousand, so there's still two hundred. Is it? Uh, is it? This is the big. The, this time frame between now and uh, uh, the end of the fall is a big push to get all that, that yes. done, and that's yes. more aggressive. We have to buy caliche and everything we need, and the striping gets done before school starts. We try to get all the seal coating done before school starts and all that. So it is our big... It's slower this year because of the rain. Mm -hmm. you know, right. rain and you can't do nothing. The gravel piles are closed. And we're running a little behind, but we, we all have it done. Okay. So my suggestion would be if uh, we certainly are mindful of that, if, if you are over budget and the contingency fund needs to be reviewed, the court, um, to offset that in this next mm -hmm. fiscal year, if you find that happens... Uh, but adding a new line item and not decreasing uh, the opposite line item puts us in dangerous territory, in my opinion. Are we comfortable with uh, if this, in fact, uh, till I was that we're able to come back and, and get some funds readily to move forward to do the work that you need to have completed? Yes, sir. We can look what was the thinking behind uh, okay. making a new line item? What was the thinking behind that process, removing that uh, from the uh, contract services? And that, Commissioner, that... So consistently we've had to come, had to come back and yeah. request for funds. Not to the... That. Go ahead, I'm sorry, Carrie. Our office probably is the one who originally requested that to come out of contract service just for proper accounting purposes, and we asked them to pull out that separate account number. But would it be appropriate to say that if that's the case, and I certainly understand from an accounting perspective, that road repair supplies should be offset by that same amount if, if we're just really providing a new line item? And if I remember correctly, the first year we did that, we did take it from road repair supplies. Um, you'll notice back in 2013, it's when we first did it, and I believe we did reduce it back then. Um, and in, that, in 2013, did we have to allocate additional funds to offset us moving that money? I don't remember us having to do that, but I could be wrong. It's about, about 23 to 27. 000. Yeah, about 25,000. 25,000, I worked in the cost So if we took 25, 000, out of out of the road repair and put it up there in the contract services, yeah, that'd be all right. Put that back in and 
Yeah. But for accounting purposes, we want it up right, there. That's fine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes, that'll work. We'll just do that. Yes. And when we first went with the $25,000 paving, we did move the money from the road repair supplies to put into contract service, so it, it had been reduced. Okay. I think we're in agreement with that same philosophy, and we would offset that amount by, um, if it's 25 or 27, 557, yeah, 27, 557. Harry, would you mind scrolling down just a little to get that last piece of it? It's done the uh, employee medical supply. It's gone up a little bit. Uh, what's the reason for that? You see that? The increase in medical supply. I'm not quite sure. Are oh, you asking that? Uh, yeah, I just wonder why that. Uh, why the bump in that? Employee medical supplies is going up uh, about a thousand. Right? That. I mean, unless there's a reason for the increase, I particularly wouldn't support it. I don't feel like we band-aid this department, but that's my opinion. Um, looks like the average four years is 5,000. Mm -hmm. That's 2,000 above the average. What have yeah. we currently spent we, on this to date? Do we know? We buy our safety vests. Sure. Is that yeah, safety vests and all that stuff out of there. And we, we go through those safety vests quite a bit, and they're expensive yeah, and that's because fair. of the oil and stuff. So, yeah, we go through that uh, quite a bit. 3,900 is year to date. 3,900 years year to date. So we currently have budgeted 6,150. I would, I would support what we have currently budgeted, 6,150. Commissioner Church? Yeah. 6,150. Yeah, sixty one fifty, I think. The machine shop moving just a little Six, row yeah. sixteen eighty nine. We buy all of our uh, metal and uh, stuff for our welding shop out of there, and the cost of metals went up, of course. It's gone up, the cost of metal? Is yes, metal. Yeah. We use that to repair, I mean, if we have anything on the equipment that we need, new tow bars or anything like that, we use all that metal out of there. Where are we shop. to date on that, Carrie? $2,028. 2000 I would suggest to stay where we are budgeted. We're just doing an across-the-board increase. $5,500. And that equipment rental and maintenance agreement, has anything on the contracts changed? I don't know if you're working with vendors through that line item. That is just our, oh yeah, yes, rental. And our, our equipment's getting a little older. You know, that that's uh, our repairs are costing a little more than than they have in the past because we've had a few breakdowns this year and that's why we're asking for a little bit more 
So the one right underneath it, if I'm following correctly, on the equipment, vehicle, and repair and maintenance. So that's currently at three hundred and eleven thousand. The increase is three forty one. Is that right? That is a subtotal of rolling it down. Okay. Of these. Okay. One forty five thirty three. On the, um, and I, I'm certainly hearing you in terms of the inventory and you're having to repair that. So I see that the jump from 103,000 to 124. And I would say that's taken a significant jump. Several years ago, it was at 70,000. The equipment rental and maintenance agreement, what, what are we expecting that increase to offset? Do what do we have? I'm sorry. Do the, do, the, do the services that we talked about yesterday, as far as the service department and uh, the maintenance uh, portion, is going to be able to lend portion of this, the service that he has under his review? Is that going to help alleviate some of that that cost factor? Hmm. It won't. Hmm. I'm not. They have their own service right. out there. Mm -hmm. What do we have currently spent out of that budgeted item? And are you talking about the maintenance and repair or the rentals? Um, the equipment rental and maintenance agreement. We ran our uh, a roller to help us seal coat during the summer. That's out of that. a, a, a big cost there too. About fifteen thousand dollars, and that does include the the rental of the roller. That has spent is spent or still remaining? That is spent. Fifteen thousand. Right. So twenty-five thousand appears to be adequate. Yeah, and I think what makes it difficult, uh, and I'll certainly just speak from my perspective, is that not all departments do across the board five percent. You know, they're really kind of up here. To Commissioner Church's point, you know, asking for what's happening. So I think that. It's what makes yours a little more detailed. Not saying that you don't need them. I'm just trying to understand what those line items are. Some departments will not request that. We'll see one increase and we'll ask what is that for and they can speak to that. But when it's across the board, it makes it difficult because we obviously mm -hmm. want to support you or mm -hmm. I want to support you with what you're needing. But when it's across the board, it makes me hard to understand which line item you kind of need it the most. I think one of the problems that all departments face is that we ask them to fill out a budget request. We don't ask them to fill out what we want. We ask them to fill out what they want. Now, if we want to set parameters, we ought to do it early. I agree. But uh, let's not have people come up here and then, then give them to Dickens because they ask for what they think they need. Um, I realize we have difficult decisions to make, and so the way we've been budgeting in the county, it really does put a lot of pressure on us. Now, if we, if we would say early on, we want you to have a flat budget, then that's what we'd expect. But uh, that's not what we've told people. So I would suggest the equipment rental and maintenance at 2,500. It appears to be adequate and really. Um, 25,000. I'm sorry, 25,000, um, but would support the 124 based on what you said, uh, Sebastian, with the equipment, the jump from that, and really being able to offset that. That's fine. Can we talk about the salaries and overtime there? We asked for an increase. It's, uh, yes, please. It's more, uh, we're asking for, uh, to pay our summer help a dollar more an hour. 
and it's been seven to ten years since we've asked for that. And uh, the reason is because it's so hard to find somebody that'll sit on a tractor for ten hours in the middle of the summer. How much are we? Much we pay them nine dollars an hour now. And some of the guys that we get, they'll stay for a little while and they'll leave. They get offered more money or whatever. And you can't blame them for that. But we'd like to raise it up to $10 an hour and see if we can find somebody that'll stick out the summer and try to make two or three passes throughout the county mowing. They have enough money in there to go ahead and do this because we usually don't use all the money by correct. Right. So but we will use some of it this year out of next year's budget because of the way the weeds have been growing. Usually we turn people loose and uh, around the 1st of October, what we're going to have to keep them another month at least. I've got three tracks, I hope it's one month. And also that's our overtime money for snow or anything else. And the way it's looking, we might get a, a bad winter. So we don't want to use all that money up. So this is not just temporary summer help. This is for those who may overtime and and summer help salary. Okay. I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Other than we've not allowed um, any other departments through the process, other than the sheriff's office, in terms of new positions, there's there's no salary increases in this budget currently. Yeah. Am I saying that correctly, Carrie? So. Um, I mean, we can vet that out at the end. So, I just, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Is that something we need to push back and, and, and discuss that at a later time? Doing a whole salary structure, can we? Whatever y'all want to do, but uh, I don't know that there's anything, because Roger has had plenty of budget. I don't know that the court ever set the dollar amount that he could pay. Uh, well, I did as long as he had. About 10 years ago, oh, did you? Okay. Okay. We do have a lot of trouble getting hired. They, they, they are in a sort of a unique position mm -hmm. from what, what they do. And uh, certainly uh, to keep aesthetically uh, all the terrain as it should be and what we would like for it to be, mm -hmm. certainly I think that's uh, uh, very appropriate. I, I know you guys don't get a lot of calls, but I do want commissioners to yeah, get a call too. <laughs> we all get calls from taxpayers. <laughs> all different kind of calls. A, a quick question, though. I want to make sure I understood you correctly, Carrie. You're indicating with what's currently budgeted at seventy-five thousand that he may still have enough in that budget to to take care of what he's indicated he would like to do. Is that correct? Yes. Um, just looking at the past five years, fifty-five thousand is the most that's been spent out of that budget. Fifty-five thousand is the most that's been spent on that budget. So, with seventy-five still staying budgeted in, it may be enough to offset that. And today, there's no salary structure, so I don't know that the court <laughs> gives direction on that. But so we're saying that basically the, the funds are there for you to do what you need to do. Okay. So seventy-five. Make sure they're there. If we have a bad winter, we pay a lot of overtime. Then it comes to the summer for the summer help, and then there's not enough money to pay them what we requested. I mean, mm -hmm. if you want to go back to court, I just want you to understand if that happens, we can go back to court and put some money in. And we would encourage you to do just that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think staying at 75 would be adequate. And thank you for pointing that out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Thanks. Thanks, guys. That's Thank it. You. Thank you, sir. Okay. That completes all of the general fund departments, right. except the constables that uh, you were hoping to speak to. Can we, uh, do, do, I don't have a number for my, do you have a number? I do. Which constable would you, I have, uh, uh, who do you have? I have two and four. Here. See if you can get both of those and if you'd like to come for the court. And um, do we want to review any of the special funds? While we're waiting, yes, we can do that. Because we'll need to go through those.
You want to go ahead? And I apologize, these worksheets are a little bit different because I do have the revenue listed as well. <clears throat> so the items you see in red are actually revenue. Uh, this first fund is the one that I've asked you to uh, make the transfer on the treasurer's staff. Uh, since we don't have any revenue coming into it, we, we're just digging a, a deficit fund balance. So uh, that's why there's nothing requested for the current year. Okay. This is a tax office account, obviously. Uh, Looks balanced. Okay. Okay. Law library, we did increase the law books by 25,000, I'm sorry, 15,000. And I have expressed concern to a couple of you, I believe, about our expense in that fund. Uh, we're paying for two different online research tools and I got some usage reports and I'm not sure that the usage on them justifies the expense. So I, I would like for uh, someone <laughs> to look into that deeper and determine if we can make some changes there. So do you think for this year in terms of budgeting you, with what's currently in practice that 135 would be needed to offset that or you think 120 taken into account we would need to dive into that conversation and what that should look like. I'm not sure that we need to go up to the 135, but I'm not sure that the 120 will cover it. Uh, we might be able to get by with 125. Okay. And so currently that, um, the law library is under the judge's office, is that correct? correct. Okay. So, no, 120. Is this, is this the line item that we talked about, 77 hits all year? Right. Uh, we pay $2,844 a month for our Westlaw online service and the usage over the last 12 months, we had uh, 77 lo logins. Uh, however, on this particular contract, that does allow us to get the hard copy at a 50% reduction. So we would need to study whether that increase in the hard copies would offset the cost of the online service. We pay $995 for a similar online service through LexisNexis as well. If you can go to the DA and the county attorney on, on this hard copy library. Is this something that maybe we can uh, look past one of these days and go to a online library? reason the law library has been kind of problematic is because the Court of Appeals uses it. And in the old days, uh, they uh, used it, uh, they need, they wanted to have books because the, you know, the judges and people that used the law library uh, in the Court of Appeals. And so that has changed somewhat because the judges are, like they have their own LexisNexis research, I think now, and I don't think the need for the Court of Appeals is quite as strong as it used to be. So uh, this is something we've kind of helped monitor over the years, and we've cut the books way back. But Carrie's right that, uh, you know, one of the reasons, it's not, it, it would be much more if we were just getting the books, but we get sort of a break because we uh, have an electronic feed or not. But frankly, I, you know, I think if, uh, subject to what the Court of Appeals thinks, that I'm wondering if, uh, I don't think that's something we're required to have. And with that little, we have that number on that little usage by the public, you know, I think that might be something we might look to see where we can phase that out or not. Don't you think, Scott? I mean, because we kept, that, that's why we keep it open is for the public to use. But if the walk-in is that small, uh, there are other resources that they can use. And so, I mean, it's worth taking a look at, I think. Where that may, you may be able to make some significant cuts there. I would encourage this court to do that. And if we could get uh, rid of this uh, library that's uh, so unused, I think it be, would be money ahead on that. And uh, I'd look forward to the day that we could do that. Yeah. I, I can tell you, you certainly don't need as much space as you've got allotted to it right now. I, there's no doubt about that. It's, if you go up there, it's like, it's, 
there are, you know, there's huge areas of unused space up there now. And just, there's just not that much of a, so much is available online now, different resources that nobody uses the books even anymore. So, at least the lawyers don't. And so I, I think it's, it's worth looking at whether we can face it out or not, I think. So we could look at that as far as the savings that uh, mm -hmm. we get. Uh, you know, I wouldn't do anything unless I kind of coordinated with the Court of Appeals. Uh, but, um, and it may well be, you might have to have a terminal, but I think, I think our deal with, see, we've got a separate contract with Westlaw on the law library as we do from the general research that we're, most of us use LexisNexis, but our contract with Westlaw, we have a contract with Westlaw for the law library only. I think that's running out pretty quick, isn't it, Carrie? I didn't look. I'm not sure. But, I mean, you certainly at least might be able to negotiate a lower deal with Westlaw or switch over to Lexis and have maybe one or two terminals for public use if you need that. And if we pick and, one. It, you know, you might, not, you might not even need, we might not even need that. So I think in terms of budgeting, um, Sticking to the 125,000 in terms of what we know today and pursuing the opportunity to really dive into that conversation yeah. so that that does allow some time to work with the courts and really understand that impact. I think okay. a lot of that usage, frankly, uh, the, from the public is pe members of the public who come in and are looking for a document. They want to file their own divorce, they want to file their own name change, and so they come up and they, and some of them are referred there from the courts. Uh, you know, looking for information like that, and so, which is a good, you know, good service to offer, but not if you're having that few, few people. So there may be more members of the public coming in for information than using. They're not using the uh, computer system, so I don't. I, that just may something maybe some situation where you might say. Or you're just going to have to consult a private attorney or go to the library. Or, could, could you delve into that to see if we uh, yeah. really sure. have to have a, a law library? And uh, I, I can tell you, we don't have to have a law library. But I, but there are a lot of people that you might want to check with before you got rid of it. So, well, well, right, yeah, exactly. The, the the jail having legal research capability for the jail is is an essential part. Uh, we need to do that, but I think that's separate from this. Is that if I'm not well, mistaken? and I'm curious, Dave, we do collect about $100,000 in law library fees on civil filings. So does that not, since we're collecting that fee, would that not require us to provide? Okay. Yeah, obviously we, we just to drop that fee. It. Yeah, okay. so that affect our revenue. So, but we'll check, we can check into it. We're really interested to find out the answers to that. Thanks. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Courthouse. Courthouse security fund. We do have six officers that are budgeted under this fund. Um, and I don't believe we had any changes other than reclassifying their cell phone allowances. And this is a deficit budget, if I'm following you correctly. It the only is. <laughs> and so the general operating dollars offset this? Correct. And uh, we chose to keep all of our courthouse security officers budgeted in one place. Um, initial, initially, we kind of split it between general fund and courthouse security. So it's just an accounting item. But if you ever wanted to move those officers back to the general fund and not transfer money into this fund to cover it, we could, we could certainly do that. But I do think this is helpful having them all in all one together. place too so that you, you can really understand the full salary scope and each of the line items. And there's six positions in that, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And as you see, we, we bring in about $60,000 in designated fees, but our total expense is 471000 So the county offsets close to over $400,000 for this fund. Is that right. right? Okay. I, I believe we have a little bit of a fund balance, and it's not quite the full four hundred, but close. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, quick question. The non-capital equipment... There was not any specific request there, but it seems like it's fairly frequent that some small item will come up 
and it's just easier to have some sort of a budget in there. I can't hear anything. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear it. There was not a specific request for non capital items. Uh, I just plugged an amount in there because it seems like throughout every year some small item comes up, and if we have a budget for it, we don't have to bring it back to Commissioner's Court. Yeah, other than, you know, we have not allowed other departments, again, kind of back to the same concept, to just have a line item without a specific request, and certainly up to the court, but um, I tend to lean on consistency, just because I can remember from year to year. <laughs> and you will see that in several of the special funds. In the special funds. Okay. So, leave it or, or take it out, what's your... What's your thoughts? You, you would prefer not to have a, I would, line item. Yeah, unless there's something specific being requested to be yeah, consistent with all the departments. Um, take it in. would be my preference. But. Where do we take it if they come and want something? Yeah. Well, Is that a contingency? Mm -hmm. or? It would, if it, we can't take it from another uh, line item, it will have to come out of their fund balance. Okay. But I think that might do us well in position for next year of the conversation if there is something that is being requested, requested. you know, that we're following a consistent pattern across all the funds. But. Yeah, I don't have a problem. Okay. You know, if we have a, uh, a wand that goes back. I'm sorry. I, if we have a, a wand that goes back, do they want to see they have that wand? We're going to have to wait to get that wand replaced. In other words, so we have to be Without being that, that would be an emergency type thing that you need to get and not be able to wait until two weeks later to say, oh, yeah. And would any of that fall in the equipment line item? Would, it, would that purchase in that scenario? It would, since they don't have an equipment repair and replacement account in that fund, it would fall. So there would be 6000 that would fall under the equipment fund for a wand emergency type of thing. That would be an appropriate line item, is that right, Carrie? I, I believe a wand would be non-capital. Uh, but, but in that scenario, if there was an urgent situation? Uh, we could move it, well, we could move it from equipment, but that transfer would also require commissioner's court approval. And when there is some, I'm remembering a policy, carry when there's something in between a court session that um, does require urgent action, does that typically go to the judge? I, I thought there was a policy if something emergent existed in between court hearings. Right. I believe it may be more of a purchasing uh, standard that emergency items can be pushed through. Because I, and that's a fair question. Yeah. I'm going to definitely is speak. Is there a specific figure that uh, there's a ceiling that, uh, so it's not? Not that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I would say let's just try it in four years to see where we are. Okay. Okay. You ready to move on? Court has security. And that non capital 2500, is that the same it's concept? The same it is, yes. Okay. What is the building's repair and maintenance for the, what would fall under that? That was originally plugged in there for the bulletproof glass replacement out at JP3. So can that be removed? I believe he was still interested in pursuing the project. He just thought he could get it at a lesser cost. Yes, he felt he could get it cheaper than the one they've now announced. So I asked him to present his request back to the court for you so that, that's what you're referring to on yesterday? Yes, sir. Um, is there, um, I'm trying to think of the um, best way to ask this question. Does that need to be repaired? Uh, it didn't. Uh, I think it's the judge's preference. Uh, he has an issue with the ladies. Uh, when it was built, Judge Dysart's the one that went through it with us on the design. He liked what we had. Uh, judge Jackson does not like it. He says for his ladies to retrieve items from the outside, he has to get up and go around, uh, to go to the door to get items back, large items. 
the voice transmission through there, he says he, his staff has a problem with that, communicating back and forth through there. So it's so we can discuss that when we yeah, look at all the projects. So. Yeah. Okay. And that was fifteen thousand, Carrie. I'm sorry, I was catching that fifteen thousand that's budgeted. Yes. Today. Okay. Is that carried over, Carrie? I request that. It is. I just rounded it up. Uh, graffiti eradication. I can't say that we've ever used that. I just. Uh, put some budget in there in case we had any graffiti that needed to be removed from a building. Okay. We can use that fund. Child abuse prevention, another fee that we collect that we've never used. Yeah, We're just my. building fund balance there. Hmm. Okay. This is county clerk's records management fund. And is this, this is your fund, Julie, is that right? Okay. And so there's enough revenue to offset that fund, is that right? Correct. Okay. And it is restricted on its use. All right. Thank you. Election fund, this is the fund that uh, Malin spoke about yesterday that uh, all the funds have also come and gone through this fund. Uh, it's where we buy our election equipment out of. So this again is a deficit fund, is that right? No. No, there's a... no the, oh, it's been years back, but the county transferred money into this account. Okay. And we also have... This one has a fund balance to it. It does have a fund balance. And also, I'll try to keep this short. Back in 1999, we started um, receding monies into the general fund that should have gone into this fund. Not sure why that happened, but we have gone back and researched those. There will be additional revenue coming into this fund because anything uh, Malin bills out, and I believe it was $80,000 so far this year, should be going into this fund. So we will have some corrections to make there. Okay. Voter registration fund is also our chapter 19 fund uh, where we get reimbursement from the state, very restricted on the expenditures. Okay. Court records management, this is a countywide account, but basically um, Sandra's office uses it. One of her staff is paid out of this fund and this is where we have budgeted the equipment uh, that she requested this year. It's a countywide fund? It, a countywide specific for records management, yes. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. And this is Caroline's records management fund. And does this also have a fund balance behind it, that? It does. I'm not sure what it is, but it, it, it does have a fund balance. About 189,000. 189,000, okay, thank you. Justice Court Technology Fund. Um, this is the JP Courts that have used this fund, okay. The JP Courts, and I don't, I need to follow up with the JPs and see if they had any requests on that one. But there again, it's very restrictive on what it can be used for. I'm going to have there to are restrictions to what it can be used yes. The same with the county clerk and district clerk technology fund. It's this, very restrictive. Uh, this is restrictive for technology as well. And does this yes. have a fund balance behind that as the well? JP or the? The district, district. courts, uh, the county slash district court technology. Seventeen seventeen thousand 
county attorney check fund, and he does pay a couple of positions out of this fund, I believe. And then next is the county attorney forfeiture fund, and he also pays, I believe, three salaries out of this fund. And this is the one fund, Scott, that the court does have discretion over, even though that's not the case for the majority of the forfeiture funds, right? Okay. I remember there was one that came up this year, and it was new information, at least. District Attorney check fund, there again is totally under his discretion with the exception of budget approval. Uh, payroll fund, this is just a pass through of state. Okay. His forfeiture release, as you said, is strictly under his, but you do. His purview under, this is not one the court has any. Okay. No, uh, you are required to approve a budget, but he has full discretion over it. And we are entitled to the information. It's approved in the budget, uh, but he has full discretion. Okay. Correct. I'm just trying to follow. Uh, that one doesn't exist any longer. Um, he just has a small amount of federal forfeiture funds. Same thing, though. It's totally under his discretion. And Sheriff Federal, same scenario. Are we allowed to ask if there are fund balances in those, what those balances are? Sure, but it's fair to ask the balance, the, those funds. And we've done before. And we have before, yeah. right. Okay. Um, with the sheriff fund and uh, the one before, if I, mm -hmm. I know we were scrolling a little quickly there. Okay, the sheriff's federal forfeiture fund has 298,000. And which other one were you interested in another? Yes, um, you might, I don't know if we passed it, you might scroll up just a little. The DA forfeiture fund. Um, it has one million two hundred thousand. I'm sorry. One million two hundred thousand. One million two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, we have a fund specific for the grants that the sheriff's office receives. That's our fund two seventy two. This is where we account for the federal grants that the sheriff's office receives. And then he has a local forfeiture fund as well. Yeah, is that a separate balance? It is. Yeah, if I can have that as well. 22,400. I'm sorry, Carrie. 22,400. Okay, thank you. And then we move into our debt service, and we only have one outstanding debt. Now it's less than $7 million. Um, wow. And we will have to fund 1.9 million this year. And it will pay off in March of 2018. So Woohoo! We're getting there. <laughs> Okay, this is our capital projects fund. Is this, um, we're at a point now, let's, let's take a, a 10 minute break and uh, breaks, whatever. Let's see if we can get also a hold of the conference. They should be on their way, they break. indicated. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll take 10 a 10 minutes. minute break. Uh, we said uh, 10, 10 30, 30 it's 10 35. Oh, <laughs> 